Today we are going to be having a look at Ideanomics and in this video I'm going to have a look at the business side of things and in tomorrow's video I'm going to have a look more at the financial side of things so that you have the kind of complete picture if it's something that you are looking at investing in. Now in this video as I say I'm going to have a look at the products it offers, I'm going to have a look at the services and the companies that it is invested in and essentially what it does. So without further ado, what is Ideanomics? Ideanomics, as they claim to be, focus on two kind of main industries, fintech and also electric vehicles. Now they have two kind of main components to them. You have their Ideanomics Mobility and Ideanomics Capital. The Ideanomics Mobility is related to the kind of infrastructure and the ecosystem related to electric vehicles. What a company would do is they would hire Ideanomics or one of the company's kind of subsidiary companies uh, related to an Ideanomics to source electric vehicles for them. So to give you an example for that, let's say that you own and operate a bus company and you want to buy 20 electric buses because diesel engines are quite outdated. When you're buying electric vehicles, there are a lot of considerations that you need to consider. Uh, you need to know and understand that there has to be kind of charging points between different locations. You need to know the range and you need to have quite a lot of things working together so that these buses can travel efficiently without kind of running out of charge. And that's where Ideanomics or one of the companies Ideanomics works with or owns uh, comes in. They will do kind of roadmap strategy, which is just kind of planning routes, vehicles, they will provide the vehicles, they will kind of help with charging infrastructure to make sure it's in place, operations and energy management, making sure things are running efficiently. And lastly is their kind of main products, which is vehicle as a service and charging as a service, which is where Ideanomics makes most of its money. They also provide electric vehicles. Now these electric vehicles aren't kind of personal electric vehicles, they're more commercial electric vehicles, apart from the scooters and motorcycles. You have trucks and vans, agricultural tractors, uh, drainage and tractors, okay so drainage tractors, um, I didn't know that was a thing. And lastly the products they offer is kind of related to the charging infrastructure of electric vehicles. So you have wireless, wired and kind of solar charging. So not only do they do direct sales, but they also have financing options, which they have called vehicle as a service and charging as a service. Now it's just kind of financing and leasing. So I don't know why they've called it yet. Yeah, vehicle as a service, charging as a service. I think just because it sounds more kind of high techy. but yes, they focus more on the kind of commercial electric vehicles, not personal electric vehicles. Secondly, they have their fintech solutions. Now I'm not going to go too deep into this because it is not actually a, a very large part of their business. Right now they're focusing more on the kind of electric vehicle side of things. Now what I have also found is that the website kind of exaggerates quite a lot of things and it makes it seem really cool and really interesting. If you really want to get a better idea on what the company does, it helps actually look at their business overview. And here it is. This is their 10k form for Ideanomics, which actually breaks down their business overview, which we're going to kind of focus on just a key few points because websites are very deceptive at times. Firstly, this company has pivoted quite a few times. From 2010 through 2017, our primary business activities were providing premium content video on demand, which is quite far off electric vehicles. Starting in early 2017, the company transitioned its business model to become a next generation financial technology company. The company built a network of businesses operating principally in the trading of petroleum products and electronic components that the company believed had significant potential to recognize benefits from blockchain and artificial intelligence technologies. Now I know that was a mouthful, but it's not actually that kind of um, important because during 2018, the company ceased operations in the petroleum products and electronic components trading business and disposed of the businesses during 2019. At this stage, they then kind of realized the potential in electric vehicles, or at least they kind of 
learned the potential of getting investors interested in electric vehicles. And their focus kind of shifted to that. This led to us establishing our Mobile Energy Global Business Unit. Fintech continues to be a sector of interest, so not kind of pursuit, it's more of an interest to us as we look to invest in and develop businesses that can improve the financial services industry, particularly as it relates to deploying blockchain and AI technologies. Like, what related to blockchain and AI technologies? Now, here is where you actually get an idea on how it makes its money. So they work with a sales to financing to charging model. Now, what this essentially means is they make money through sales, then they can also finance and they can also be charging. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. So they do produce their own kind of electric vehicles, but that isn't exactly where they make most of their money. The company's planned EV revenues will come from the sale of EVs under our Medici Motor Works and Treeletric brand. So the Medici Motor Works are their kind of financing company and the Treeletric brands are the kind of two-wheeled vehicle electric vehicles, so like mopeds and scooters. Uh, brands outside of China and within China. Through our MEG operating unit sales of other manufacturers, vehicles and batteries. So they don't just sell their own products, they also sell other companies' products. Mobile Energy Global. So as I was saying about the sales to financing to charging, this model, using this model, the company helps the customer find the best vehicle for its needs and earns fees for every completed sale. Revenue is derived from the spread between group buying of vehicles and price sold. Fees for the arrangement of financing and payments from the subsequent charging and energy management. So they act more like a middleman. They're not directly selling their own products. It's not their own products that they kind of mainly focus on. They just source products for other companies. Then they have the true technologies. Two-wheel bikes and scooters form a large part of the transportation infrastructure in the ASEAN region. The company has also started to import Treeletric, that's it, Treeletric brand EV vehicles into the United States. Uh, Medici Motor Works is its own brand vehicles, but it doesn't actually specify kind of what stake it owns in this company. Solatrack is a kind of manufacturer of electrical powered tractors. And in October 21st, 2020, the company acquired 15% of this Solentra. Now, Wave is actually something that when you read it, it sounds really interesting. On January 15th, 2021, acquired 100% of privately held Wireless Advanced Vehicle Electrification Inc. Wave is a leading provider of inductive wireless charging solutions for medium and heavy duty electric vehicles. Embedded in roadways and depot, fa depot facilities, the WAVE system automatically charges vehicles during scheduled stops. Now this actually sounds really cool because when you think about it, it's kind of like a vehicle drives over the road and as it's driving, it's being charged at the same time. A bit like your phone, like you have those wireless plates that you put your phone on, but the plate is actually just the entire road. That sounds pretty cool, but that is not what this is. This is WAVE, a massive kind of metal thing that sits on the road that charges the bus when it goes over it. And this has quite a few issues with it. Firstly, from this, what you can actually see is they actually have to dig up the road, put in this large charging cable thing underneath the road, put in this platform uh, that conducts electricity, I will have you know, and then you just have it there. This isn't exactly efficient, like there's not that much difference between the amount of effort you would actually have to do to put this in and the driver coming out and plugging in the bus. Thirdly, there's kind of a safety issue, I would say. I mean, like people cross the road and they walk across roads and this is a big metal plate that sits in the middle of the road that is supposed to conduct the electricity and charge the vehicle. Um, so if a cable goes kind of wrong and accidentally touches the surface and or maybe it's raining and then suddenly someone decides I might just cross the road here, steps on the metal plate and then you have an electrocuted person. Now that's just kind of like a thought that could never happen or it could happen 
but it's just something that kind of came to my head. So yes, mm, like it's it looks good on paper and it sounds good and how they say it on the website sounds good, but when you actually look at it and think about the practicalities of it, that is kind of to be debated. Uh, next they have the Energet en Energica Motor Company, and this is something that they purchased twenty percent of. Um, and it's a world leading manufacturer of high performance electric motorcycles. Uh, on January 28th, 2021, the company invested 15 million in Silk EV via a promissory note. Okay, doesn't really kind of see what it's um, got for that 15 million, but okay. Next, you have the Ideonomics Capital, which is their kind of financial services or fintech things. The only thing that they have kind of actively done with their kind of financial side of things is on January 8th, 2021, the company acquired 100% of privately held Timios Holding Corp. Timios, a nationwide title and escrow service provider, which has been expanding in recent years through offering innovative and freedom of choice friendly solutions for real estate transactions. Now, the financial side of things aren't really that kind of I mean, they are things that they own and they are things that they are invested in, but they are not things that actually produce a lot of revenue, which you will see in the video that I will upload tomorrow when I kind of look into the revenue. They make most of their revenue through kind of selling, well, not really selling, they source uh, electric vehicles for companies. Yeah, in terms of the actual business side of things, there is a lot of kind of questions. They do invest quite heavily in electric vehicles, but right now they don't actually have a huge amount to show for that investment. I mean, they are making money through kind of sourcing electric vehicles and kind of getting a commission from kind of selling and financing electric vehicles to companies. But in terms of the actual products that they produce, there isn't a huge amount or there isn't a huge amount of information. But yes, that brings us to the kind of end of the business side of Ideonomics. If you would like to kind of see the financial side of things, be sure to subscribe to the channel or just come back to this channel when the video is uploaded. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy, hit that like button and I will see you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.